Welcome to the world of Designing Women, a television series that captured the essence of the late 80 seconds with its mix of humor, sharp wit, and social commentary. Have you ever found yourself reminiscing about the first time you tuned in, curious about the impact it had on your life? Or perhaps, like many others, you have a personal story inspired by the show that you're eager to share. Now, let's delve into some fascinating facts about Designing Women. This sitcom, created by Linda Bloodworth Thomason, centered around the lives of four dynamic women working at an interior design firm in Atlanta. Premiering in 1986, the series quickly gained popularity for its smart writing and the compelling performances of its cast. The show tackled various social issues of the time, from feminism to Southern culture, all while delivering laughs and heartfelt moments. The characters, played by Delta Burke, Dixie Carter, Annie Potts, and Jean Smart, became iconic figures, each contributing a unique flavor to the show's dynamic. As we celebrate the one-year mark of this exploration into the world of designing women, we invite you to reflect on your most cherished memory or personal experience related to the series. Did it spark a friendship, offer a much-needed escape, or perhaps leave you with valuable life lessons? We'd love to hear your stories and memories in the comments below. Share your thoughts on how designing women has woven itself into the fabric of your life. What impact has it had, and when was that memorable first time you tuned in? Here's to the laughter, the lessons, and the lasting impressions of Designing Women. Your stories add depth to the narrative of this iconic series. In the early 80 seconds, Dixie Carter and Delta Burke shared the screen in the Dynasty Dallas spoof Filthy Rich, a show produced by Linda Bloodworth Thompson. Thompson, the executive producer, made a vow to reunite the trio after the show's conclusion. The result of that promise was the creation of the 1986 TV series Designing Women. This collaboration not only brought Carter and Burke together again, but also marked the beginning of a successful and memorable television series. It's interesting to note that Carter and Burke later joined forces in a 2002 episode of Family Law, showcasing the lasting connection formed during their earlier collaboration. Stay tuned for more insights into the iconic show and the talented individuals who contributed to its success. In September, after the DW creator's scathing opus ed in The Hollywood Reporter, ABC swiftly committed to a script for designing women. Linda Thomason's critique of ex-CBS boss Les Moons caught ABC's attention, fueling interest in a series reboot. Notably, Gene Smart, who left the show in its sixth season, expressed interest in the revival, citing a desire to join the project alongside Annie Potts. This potential reboot is currently in its script commitment phase. The show's enduring appeal and the cast's enthusiasm for a revival hint at the lasting impact of the iconic series. Delta Burke, Meshech Taylor, and Alice Ghostly emerged as the standout performers in Designing Women. Despite the show's initial struggles during its first season on CBS, where frequent time slot changes threatened its existence, viewer protests led to a renewal. The series found stability on Monday nights, paving the way for its eventual success. Notably, only three cast members received Emmy nominations for acting, Delta Burke, Meshech Taylor, and Alice Ghostly. This recognition highlights their exceptional contributions to the show's success. The turbulent early days, marked by network scheduling challenges, were overcome by the dedicated fan base and the stellar performances of these actors. The enduring legacy of Designing Women goes beyond its on-screen triumph. Behind the scenes, Delta Burke's reconciliation with Dixie Carter after a decade-long estrangement added a personal layer to the show's narrative. Burke privately apologized to her co-stars during her falling out, culminating in a public reconciliation in 2002. This rekindled friendship was evident in their joint appearance on Family Law and during the heartwarming reunions in 2003 and 2006. As the series faces the prospect of a reboot, the resilience of designing women remains a testament to its enduring appeal. The journey from network uncertainties to Emmy recognition and cast camaraderie reflects the unique blend of talent and tenacity that defined this iconic show. In the landscape of television debuts in 1986, one standout defied the odds and outlasted its peers. Designing Women, the sole survivor from the 25 series introduced that year, managed to endure well into the 1990s. Amidst its journey, the show faced a pivotal moment during its inaugural season, 
struggling in a sunny time slot against Golden Girls, Designing Women found itself on hiatus, with CBS initially canceling it. However, a remarkable turn of events occurred as over 50,000 letters poured in from fans, prompting a rescue mission by the now-defunct viewers for quality TV. The series was saved in February, shifting to Mondays, and ultimately thriving against the odds. As the show progressed into its sixth season, a potential storyline involving Mary Joss' desire to have a baby emerged. However, producers opted to scrap this plotline, considering it too similar to what another CBS show, Murphy Brown, was already exploring. This strategic decision showcased the show's commitment to avoiding redundancy and maintaining its unique narrative identity. Beyond the intricacies of its storyline choices, designing women's resilience in the face of scheduling challenges and network uncertainties became evident. Its survival from an initial threat of cancellation to becoming the only 1986 series standing for the 1992-1993 season exemplifies its enduring appeal and viewer loyalty. In the annals of television history, Designing Women's Journey is a testament to the power of audience support and the strategic decisions made by its creators. From near cancellation to a lasting legacy, this iconic series carved its place in the evolving landscape of 1980s television. Dixie Carter's unwavering presence defined the longevity of Designing Women. Appearing in every episode, she anchored the series with a consistency unmatched by her castmates. While the show navigated through scheduling challenges and network uncertainties, Carter's commitment remained steadfast. Her portrayal of Julia Sugarbaker became a linchpin, a testament to the enduring appeal of designing women. Contrary to the southern backdrop of the show, Jean Smart, an original cast member, hailed not from the southern United States but from Seattle, Washington. Smart's northern roots added a unique dynamic to the ensemble, showcasing the diverse backgrounds that contributed to the series' charm. As the sole non-Southern member of the core cast, Smart's portrayal of Charlene Frazier resonated with audiences, further enriching the show's narrative. In a surprising turn of events revealed by creator Linda Bloodworth Thomason, Meshach Taylor's character, Anthony, was initially intended as a one-off. However, due to overwhelming fan appreciation, Anthony's role expanded, earning him a permanent spot in the main cast from the second season onwards. This unplanned evolution underscored the show's ability to adapt and respond to audience preferences, solidifying Designing Women's connection with its viewers. As we delve into the layers of Designing Women, Dixie Carter's consistent presence, Jean Smart's unconventional Southern roots, and the unexpected ascent of Meshach Taylor's character stand out as key elements shaping the series. These facets not only contributed to the show's initial success, but also laid the foundation for its enduring legacy. As we bid adieu to the captivating world of designing women, let your memories unfold like a carefully scripted masterpiece. Dive into the nostalgia, rediscover the humor, and relish the timeless charm that this 1986 TV series brought into our lives. Take a moment to reflect on the intricate relationships, the witty banter, and the indomitable spirit of these Southern Bells. Designing Women wasn't just a show, it was a mirror reflecting the resilience, friendship, and audacity we all secretly yearn for in our own lives. Now, it's your turn. Share your favorite moments, the scenes that etched themselves into your heart, or the characters who felt like old friends. What did Designing Women mean to you? Was it the laughter that echoed in your living room or the tears that silently spoke of shared struggles? As we celebrate the one-year anniversary of our journey together, let's weave a collective tapestry of memories. Your thoughts, your stories, the are the threads that make this experience uniquely yours. Thank you for joining us in this exploration of designing women's legacy. Your time, your reflections, and your connection to this classic show make our celebration complete. Here's to the timeless allure of great television and the enduring bonds it forges. Cheers to you and your stories.